Alrighty, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody today? I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are ready for a day of silly golfing fun. Uh, after playing Mario Golf Super Rush back on Friday when it came out, slow start with the tutorial, but once we got into the swing of things and got to our very first golf tournament, it was actually pretty exciting. Uh, not only, you know, competing against all these characters from the Mario franchise and, and Donkey Kong, which is so weird that Donkey Kong's in there, but everyone else is a Mario character. Um, but also, we had some excitement because we had a, a viewer who had an idea. They said, you know, you have the ability to do polls here on your YouTube streams. It's not the same as Penny Points Wagers, of course, back on Twitch, but why don't you do some polls for each hole and people can vote on how they think you'll do. So I started doing it. Every poll would be like, okay, am I going to get a double bogey, a bogey, par, or birdie? And people would vote and then see if they got it right or not. And uh, it was pretty exciting, actually. It was getting good. And now in the game, we're up to the second, um, I would say second world. I guess you could say it's the second course. Where now there's going to be a new game mode unlocked. Before we get back to the standard tournament style game mode. I don't know what this game mode is going to be. Apparently there's three different game modes in the game. And apparently we're going to unlock the ability to use super shots as well. Which I guess are the shots you charge up during the the game, and you could use them to knock over your opponents as you're rushing to the ball. So, this should be exciting and interesting, right? It should be something different, and I had a good time with it on Friday. You guys seem to have a good time. We were joking, we called myself Happy Fillmore, you know, as a spinoff of the Happy Gilmore movie of the 90s, starring Bob Barker. Of course, he was the star of the movie. <laughs> but, uh... But no, yeah, it's, it was good. It was good. I'm having a good time with that. I hope you guys are having a good time too. Looking forward to another major stream of this today. What I'm, what I'm hoping is that today we will get a lot of advancement and unlock all the content. Like, I want to know what are all the game modes. And I want to know what's the combat and the super shots. I want to see that implemented because we really haven't yet. Um, you know, and I think that the game, I don't know how many courses the game has. But I certainly want to see a variety in the courses too. So far we've only seen one course which is basically the intro course, very basic. So I can't wait to see today. I think we're supposed to be like a lakeside forest course or something like that. And then there's other ones. So I saw there's one in the desert. There's one that looks like it's in the mountains with a castle. So that's pretty neat. I can't wait to see what else the game has, you know, lined up for us here in the story mode. Now, just to clarify, everybody. All right, just to clarify. No, there's no online play today. Am I planning on trying out online play eventually? Yes. But I'm not going to do it until we unlock all the game modes and we test everything out. And, you know, that has to be done through the narrative story mode. So that's what we're focusing on. Advancement in the, uh, the adve I guess they call it the adventure mode, right? Advancement in the adventure mode is our major focus here. And uh, hopefully it goes well and hopefully you guys enjoy it and it's a good time. Okay? So, that is the main stream today. Later tonight it is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on the late stream. And excited for that because we are just about to unlock the ability to use the dual pistol AMP 63s, which is the pistol that I've been using the past two, three streams we've been playing Call of Duty, trying to unlock everything for it. So finally, it looks like we will unlock everything for it and be able to do the dual wielding fun. Okay. So obviously, I'm excited for that. Um, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time later tonight. Tomorrow. It's going to be the continuation of Mass Effect 3, finally. I know we've been away for like a week and I haven't played it. I've been doing other stuff. But finally, there will be uh, Mass Effect tomorrow, continuing on. And tomorrow night, it's going to be more fun Danganronpa V3, where it looks like we're finally going to solve the fourth case. The fourth class trial is in full swing, and we're getting down to the nitty-gritty of everything. Um... So I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm happy that I'm doing two Danganronpa streams this week to make major progress in the game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are currently in the midst of an unprecedented, record-breaking heat wave here in Washington State. All right? I'm bringing this up for multiple reasons. First of all, you probably can hear an air conditioner blaring in the background of my office. Now, when the game begins, hopefully you won't hear that anymore. All right? But... I need to have this on all the time. Like, no exaggeration, it is currently 76 degrees in my office, which is nice, but it can get upwards of 80 or more 
even with the air conditioner on max blast, that's how hot it is outside. We're going to reach temperatures today, supposedly, of around 105 degrees. Tomorrow, we're supposed to completely break the records for this state, the hottest it's ever been. We're supposed to get to, like, 116 degrees tomorrow. How insane is that? Okay? So, it is crazy hot here. Now, the reason I'm really bringing this up is because my wife and I, last night, were looking at the schedule for this week. And the way that everything's lined up, FYI... What was supposed to happen is uh, I was going to stream today and tomorrow, and then Tuesday is going to be our day off for the week. I, I, I've i been streaming six straight days. Today's day seven. Tomorrow will be day eight, okay? One of the longest streaks I've actually ever streamed without taking a break in the history of me doing streaming. It's been that long. You know, usually I take a break by now. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, we were looking at the weather, okay? And... Just to be honest with you, the weather, even though it's supposed to cool down on Tuesday, I mean, not really. Like, instead of being 116 degrees, it's supposed to be 96 degrees on Tuesday. And I was talking with, with Kat, and I'm like, you know, how are we going to have a day off with that kind of heat? You don't realize we're going to be out there dying, you know, like sweating profusely, feeling fatigued. And she was like, yeah, I kind of agree. Like, I don't, you know, we were had some things we were planning on trying to do this week, but how are we going to do it? In that kind of heat. So we were talking about it. And then we looked at the, the weather schedule for the rest of the week. And it actually looks like on Wednesday, temperatures here will dip significantly. On Wednesday, it's only supposed to be in the low to mid 80s as a high. Okay? So looking at all of this and the fact that uh, my wife actually has both Tuesday and Wednesday of this week off from work. We talked about it, and I think we're going to swap days off, okay? That's why I'm bringing it up, because this is going to change the schedule for the week. So originally it was going to be, okay, I'm going to have Tuesday off. Well, I'm not. I'm actually going to be here on Tuesday, okay? So that means I'll be streaming nine straight days. Nine straight days with no breaks. Great. Okay, so... What are we going to do then on Tuesday? Because now, obviously, this is a, a last-minute change, right? This wasn't originally planned. So what am I going to do? Well, you guys have all been asking for more Fallout New Vegas. You've been craving Fallout. You want more Fallout. So I think on Tuesday, we'll do more Fallout. It'll be Fallout New Vegas on the main gameplay stream. And then on the late stream, it'll be the conclusion of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Apparently, I only have about an hour left to go. People are saying the last segment of the game takes about an hour, and it's basically a crazy, interactive, ongoing boss fight. Okay? So, I think that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll try to finish up the game. Now, if I end up finishing up the game early, which is likely, then we'll just do something else. We could just chill and talk for a little bit, depending on how much time is left, or I could swap over to another game, maybe do some Call of Duty or do something else. I don't know, but that's kind of what I'm thinking, and that's good because that will not leave Ratchet and Clank unfinished for an extended period of time. You know, I got to the very end of it yesterday and didn't get a chance to finish it. This is actually a good opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, a good opportunity to, uh, to wrap it up, okay? So, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, good stuff coming up, and, you know, I, I apologize that the schedule has to change, like, last minute. I know it's confusing when things change around last minute, and then you don't, oh, should I be here? Am I going to be here for the stream? Am I not going to be here? So I'm telling you today, two days ahead of time, I'm going to be here on Tuesday. I will not be here on Wednesday. Okay? Just so you guys know, and I hope that this doesn't screw everything up and now people are confused. Oh, I hope not. I hope people actually show up on Tuesday, because this sometimes that happens is, you know, I'll say, okay, we're changing the schedule, and the next thing you know... No one shows up. So I hope that doesn't happen. Um, Daggy Smurf, my wife, does have to work. Yeah, this is what sucks is Kat has to work both yesterday, today, and tomorrow. She's working during the three hottest days. So not only does she have to drive in that crazy heat, but, you know, at her job, yes, there's air conditioning, but it's not fully throughout the building. And yesterday, I'm not kidding, multiple people at her job went home for heat exhaustion. Yeah, right in the middle of the day. One, one woman apparently went to the bathroom and started vomiting profusely from the heat and went home. Sick. 
So, Cat has to still work today and tomorrow in that heat. Sucks ass. So, hopefully, uh, this doesn't affect her. I, You know, yesterday she was worried she was going to pass out. I was like, please, just, if you need a break, go take the break. Good luck having your boss justify telling you you can't take a break when you're about to pass out. Because if you do, you could sue them. <laughs> so... <clears throat> You know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm sure everyone's going through this right now. Again, this is not just us. This is not me just complaining for myself. Everyone here in the Pacific Northwest is going through unprecedented heat. We have never had temperatures like this before, ever. It's completely out of left field. No one knows how to handle it. I mean, like I said, I have two air conditioners pumping in this house, and it's still hot. It's still freaking hot. So, anyway. Uh, that's what I'm, what we're going through here in the Pacific Northwest. So if you live in the Pacific Northwest like me, stay safe, man. Stay cool. Don't be crazy. Don't be going out there doing strenuous shit in the heat. Don't, don't take any chances when the weather is like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, the last thing you want to do is take a chance and then regret it. That, you know, you, you want to be safe. You don't want to get heat exhaustion and get sick. So be safe, man. All right? Do the right thing for yourself. Okay. All right, guys. So that's what's going on with me. Now, FYI, today's the 27th of June. All right? We only have four days left in the month, including today. We are trying to hit 250 members by the end of this month. I'm going to give you a little hint. We're probably not doing it. <laughs> All right? At one point, we were 190 members. But people did not sign up for the auto-renewal here like they usually used to do on Twitch. They, those, those memberships did not auto-renew, and we dropped down to, like, 150. And now we've been slowly building back up every day again. Um, it is what it is. You know, I mean, and being honest with all of you, yes, it does suck for me because that's income that I used to get that I don't get anymore. And that's income that I, I relied on, you know, as part of my income for from Twitch. All those subs that I used to get. I used to have 900 subs. But here we don't have Twitch Prime. Here we don't have the ability to gift memberships. Right? Like those things don't exist on YouTube. It's a different entity entirely. So, you know, it's going to be tough. I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie or, or uh, you know, beat around the bush here. It ain't going to be easy. Just being honest. It's going to be tough trying to, to make ends meet here for the next few months until I adjust and get into the swing of things with YouTube streaming and get used to having my income what it is and getting used to how this is all going to work, all right? If you would like to become a channel member, by all means, please do. It helps me out. You get cool benefits, including getting your name highlighted here on the chat. Uh, you also get a cool chat crown to show how long you've been a channel supporter. You also do not have to abide by the slow mode that is in effect of 10 seconds per message. You can actually message as much as you want. And... You actually get some cool emotes. You get access to all of my emotes. Okay? Right now there's 17. But long term there will likely be many, many more emotes. In the future. Okay? So. Thank you in advance if you become a channel member. Also. You can do a super chat. Or a super sticker. Those things support the channel. Or you can tip me. Alright? All my income is based on crowdfunding from you guys. Just being honest. So. Any of these ways of supporting the stream is much appreciated. Thank you in advance to anyone who does contribute in any way. I contribute. I ugh, excuse me. I consider that going above and beyond being a standard stream viewer and, and to, to to go out of your way to support the stream with crowdfunding. I really appreciate that. Um, now we do have tip goals in effect. If I raise fifty dollars of tips today, I'll put on my gunner glasses. If I raise a hundred dollars of tips, I'll put on a vest. Why? Because tips help more than anything. Tips are support that I get in the short term. I can use them for things like paying bills, etc. So that's why tips are so important uh, because, you know, especially the you know, first week of the first week of uh, July coming up is when a lot of my bills come due. So your tips will help with that. Uh, if you do tip me today, and thank you in advance again to anyone who supports the stream in any way, shape, or form, Okay. All right, um, so, in the realm of news, let's get right into the news.
the fuck says that? I don't know. Who would say talk like that? Some kind of a jabroni. Anyway, uh, news-wise today, I actually don't have a lot to talk about. I'll be honest with you. I just don't have a lot to talk about at all today. By the way, before we get to that, LP101 did a super chat. I just saw it. He says, question, will you play Scarlet ne Scar yeah. Question, will you try Scarlet Nexus or Sackboy? Um, well, in regards to Scarlet Nexus, no, not really. I don't have any interest in it. Uh, I certainly don't want to be starting up an RPG right now when I'm in the midst of so many other projects and things going on. Um, I did hear that I guess it reviewed well. Like, people are saying the game is reviewing well and people are liking it, and that's good, obviously. But, no, I don't really have any interest in it. Um, especially because I'm in the midst of so many long-term games, longer games. You know, Mass Effect 3, I, I've barely even gotten to play recently. And that's a game that I've committed to a full playthrough of. So I gotta play more of that, you know. Um, you know, I would argue that it makes more sense to me for me to focus in on the stuff that I'm doing than throwing in random games that are just kind of coming out of, uh, out of left field, because I didn't even know about this Scarlet Nexus game until, like, a week ago. Two, I take it back. It was two weeks ago. Someone who was making me fan art actually asked me that I want fan art for Scarlet Nexus, and I was like, what the hell is Scarlet Nexus? <laughs> I haven't even heard of it. Okay? So I don't really want to jump into new playthroughs of games that I wasn't really interested in to begin with. If Scarlet Nexus ends up being some amazing must-play game, then long-term, I probably will play it. But in the short term, I'm not too interested. Now, he also asked about Sackboy's Big Adventure. Now, that game is currently half price on Amazon. Uh, I'm, I'm considering it, maybe for the month of July, because there's not a lot going on in July. There's only basically Skyward Sword HD, and then me doing my ongoing playthroughs, and maybe going and doing some other uh, stuff that I've always wanted to do and haven't had a chance to. But we'll see. We'll see how this month goes coming up. And, uh, you know, that'll determine what I play and what I don't play. Okay. Dark Antares says, yeah, that's the kind of game you don't really need to play right away. I'm not saying the Scarlet Nexus is bad or anything. I'm just saying, like, I didn't even know about it. No one asked me for it. And all of a sudden, now it's reviewing well, and people are like, oh, well, will you play it? All right, well, maybe I will, but, you know, it wasn't something that I had on my agenda. I had, you know, doing many other things, so those are going to be my focus first, you know? Okay. <laughs> um... Okay, did I get... Oh, no, I didn't put LP up there. LP is the first Super Chatter. And by the way, I received a tip from Rob. Rob is back. Haven't seen Rob in a while. I hope you're doing well, sir. Oops. So LP101 is the first Super Chatter of the day. And Rob on wheels... ...is the first tipper of the day with a $4.20 tip. Thank you, Rob. He says the following. Uh, okay, it's golf time. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I hope you're doing well, Rob. And uh, thank you for the first tip of the day. Yeah, I'm excited because this is something very different. You know, I don't usually play sports games. I don't usually play... Uh, this This is just kind of outside of my comfort zone deal. You know what I mean? And playing it on Friday, I'll be honest, it was a slow start learning the mechanics. But once I did and we started getting into the real golf tournament, it actually was getting exciting. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to more today for sure. Should be a good time, man. Uh, LP101 just did another super chat. Sackboy's haptic feedback is awesome. Everything feel. Everything feel. Huh? Everything feel? <laughs> all the feels. Everything, all the feels. Uh, I think what he's trying to say is that the haptic feedback is good and you can feel a lot of different stuff when you play it. Cool. So kind of like Astro's Playroom then. You know, I've already, I've already said I feel that the best exclusive so far for PS5 has actually been Astro's Playroom. It really was. Because these other exclusives that i played have been pretty disappointing. I'll, 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 I'll admit this, Ratchet and Clank yesterday was pretty good. There was some different stuff, some good good stuff, variety near the end of the game. It was linear, but at the same time, it was kind of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to the conclusion to, uh, uh, blah, 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 Tuesday night. But still, like, you know, do any of these games truly feel like groundbreaking next-gen experiences? I would say the haptic feedback in Astro's Playroom... And the graphics of Ratchet and Clank definitely feel like that. But I don't know if I've played a game that's like the total package. You know what I mean? There still hasn't been a game that's like amazing groundbreaking gameplay that could only be done on PS5. You know, graphics that wow me. You know what I mean? Like there hasn't been, there's no total package yet. Yet. <laughs> Uh, 
So, Donald, I think it's time for you to move on. He just says, why don't you try and email Twitch to get your Twitch affiliation back? So, Donald, I, I feel like you're, you're lagging behind here, all right? If you're not aware, I did contact Twitch. I talked to their legal department about it because I tried to talk to regular Twitch about it, and they said, oh, we don't deal with that in the customer service department, so you have to talk to the legal team. So I did talk to the legal team, and the legal team told me that I can't even apply for affiliation status until six months after my suspension or my, my termination. So that would be, like, October. And then they're saying you have to be an affiliate for six months before you can become a partner. Now, do you really think I want to wait till October, apply for affiliate status, try to get it back when at any moment Twitch can literally make shit up about me and say I did things I didn't do, provide no evidence whatsoever of wrongdoing, and then punish me for it. No. Twitch can go fuck itself. That is a business that's completely unfucking professional Anyone who's going to treat you like that doesn't deserve your time or efforts. I don't want to be on Twitch anymore if that's how they're going to be. You're going to tell me I did something wrong, but no evidence, no justification, but you'll still punish me for it like I'm a criminal. Well, then you can have your own fucking site with girls half naked in hot tubs, licking robot ears in yoga pants, disgusting over-the-top sexual content for minors. You can have that be your business, and I'll be over here streaming games on YouTube having fun with my audience and doing a good thing while you guys are doing fucking disgusting, gross things and running your business like a fucking joke, okay? No, I don't want to go back to fucking Twitch. I don't ever want to go back to Twitch until they change. Unless they actually root out the management that have made this business act like this and change for the better, I don't ever want to go back to fucking Twitch, ever. Why would I? I'd be an idiot, right? Why go back to the place where at a moment's notice they could just say, well, you, we think you did this, bye. Like, wait, what? What do you mean you think I did something? Well, where's the evidence? When did I do it? What are you talking about? <laughs> fuck down. Seriously. It's fucking bullshit. Why the fuck would you, I ever want to go back to Twitch after being mistreated like that? I don't have Stockholm Syndrome, guys. I, you know, <laughs> I'd, ra I'd rather do my own thing where I can do it and be free to do it and not have to put up with their fucking bullshit, okay? So, the the Donald, I think you're way behind the times. You act like I never did anything to try to, 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 do, to get answers out of Twitch. I absolutely did. <laughs> Lollermittens, what are you talking about? He goes, it's a better streaming platform. All right, there's one thing better on Twitch, all right? The one thing that's better on Twitch is... The monetization options are wider. I take it back. There's two things. The monetizations are wider, and there's some discovery over there. Okay? So, number one, yeah, you can gift subs, or you can get a, a Twitch Prime sub. That's definitely a huge extra income, right? And the other thing is, yeah, when you're a streamer streaming a new game and stuff, you have potential. You may show up in, like, the listing of the top people playing that game. You may get a few extra viewers on your stream because of that. Um... No, I don't believe that that is actually any kind of advantage for me at all. No one is discovering my my channel over on Twitch at all. No one. I didn't get any, wow, look at all these new viewers I got and new fans because I'm streaming on Twitch. That never happened. It was always a core group of people who enjoyed my content. There were people who came over, usually there were people who came over because people were making fun of me on YouTube. And then they came over and discovered that my streams are actually nothing like how people actually portray them on YouTube. So... I don't get any advantage of being there. By the way, the visual quality is terrible compared to YouTube because they limit you to such a low bitrate that you got to put up with fucking terrible 720p shit. It's trash. It really is. Now, the thing is, YouTube is improving. I mean, obviously, they're, I, I, I do feel over time they will get, hopefully... Uh, up to par, up to snuff with what, what Twitch is doing. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be overnight. But, you know, it's a process. And, uh, you know, I'm building up my, my channel here. I am. I'm starting... I'm, essentially, I'm starting over, which is exactly what I told you guys I was going to have to do uh, if I came back over here. If I left Twitch and came to YouTube, this is exactly what I knew was going to happen. I was going to have to build my channel back from the ground up. I hadn't focused on my YouTube channel in a long-ass time, right? And I knew there was going to be, you know, big changes. And we've, we have firsthand have seen some of these changes now, right? Uh, it is what it is. But I'm certainly not going to give up. I'm certainly not going to say, oh, well, 
I didn't get all those people to come over here to my YouTube channel immediately when I, I left Twitch. That's a completely unacceptable failure, and now I quit. No, fuck that. I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to plug away. I'm going to try to do better, right? <laughs> Academy Award winner Michael Kane says, On Twitch, I could only watch you locked at 360p, so I usually waited for YouTube uploads, but now with YouTube, I can actually watch you at 720p, no problem. That's right. YouTube actually has all these different qualities that you can watch a stream on. Very different than on Twitch when you were basically locked into whatever they, they gave you. And a lot of the times it was disappointing. The option wasn't great, you know. By the way, because I lost my partnership, they took away those options anyway. Like, remember, I don't even I don't even get uh, other stream options, uh, quality options anymore. They removed them for, from my channel because I was out of the partnership. Basically, the way on Twitch is the only way to have a good time on Twitch is to be in the partner program. Seriously, like, that's it. If you're not in the partner program, you might as well not even fucking stream on Twitch. Because you get a ton of benefits for being a partner. If you're not a partner, those benefits aren't given to you. And you basically have this inferior situation. You know? <laughs> so anyway. Why are now people saying, rest in peace, random people in the stream chat. Stop it with your death meme. It's not funny. Stop that right now. Okay. So anyway, I think I'll stop taking the bait now. <laughs> I'll stop taking the bait and getting derailed here. Um, it looks like Al Gore has tipped me a dollar thirty. <laughs> Al Gore says, "I warned you all of global warming. Now everyone's burning like a crisp. <laughs> everyone's burning like a like a tasty hot crisp. Wow. Also, we need to put the money in a lockbox." <laughs> oh my god. Memes from the 90s. Before we knew they were memes. <clears throat> so anyway, Al Gore. You know, you did try to... He actually did try to warn us. An Inconvenient Truth. Go watch that movie. He did try to warn us. And we didn't listen, and now the world is baking. <laughs> wow. Snow Carl to the dollar thirty says since you're now free of PC shackles of Twitch and no longer have to act like a kid's PR friendly, I would love if you brought back old Phil. Most of your fans started watching it when you were just shitting on everything and raging, and I think we'd all love it. No. You may not realize it's not an act. I've changed, I've matured as a person. I'm not the same guy I was 10, 15 years ago. You know? Jadavex Gaming has an interesting take. You ready for this one? Are you ready for an interesting take? Jadifex Gaming says the following. Ratchet and Clank's Rift Mechanic is a pure gimmick. All pocket dimensions are just optionally easy. They're side rooms to get armor. Only the fifth planet has purple crystals which change the level a bit. Yeah, there's two There's two levels that change when you hit the crystals. Um, and that those are the only actual levels that implement shifting of dimensions. In reality, you're right. Every other time that there's a dimensional shift, it's usually just to walk into an optional pocket dimension, which really is just a challenge dungeon, a challenge room, that's incredibly easy to do, to get a piece of optional armor. Everything you're saying is actually correct. I, I cannot disagree with a word that you have said. Because, yeah, and that's one of the disappointments about the game for me, is when they were advertising it, they were acting like this dimensional shift mechanic was going to be some kind of an amazing thing. When in reality, all it is is, okay, you can tether, you know, it's basically like having a hook shot. You can tether far off and grab ledges, right? Or you could do an optional challenge dungeon that gives you a piece of armor that's insanely easy. None of them are hard at all. Or, I mean, honestly, none of them are even challenging in the least. Um, and there's only two worlds that really even implement the dimensional shifts as a part of the world. I take that back. I guess there's three. So there's, wait a minute. There's the mining, the mining world. That's one for sure. No, it's two. It's the mining world and it's the underwater world. Those are the two worlds, right? That implement the dimensional shifts. That's right. There's only two in the whole game. And everything else, you're right. I have to agree. It's kind of a it's gimmicky. It's definitely meant to kind of act like it's something special. When in reality, it's it's kind of like the same kind of platforming stuff you've done. In many other games. 
It really is. I don't want to say it's a bait and switch, but it's definitely kind of when you watch the ads for the game and everything, it's basically a misrepresentation because it makes you feel like, oh man, if I get this game, we're going to be dimensional shifting. It's going to be using the graphical engine in a different way we've never seen for the first time. And listen, the first few times that you go through those, that's fine. The first few times you go through one of those, oh, that's cool, right? Um, but quite frankly, no, it's not the focus of the game um, at all. And it does feel kind of like the, the, they, they built an expectation with the advertisement of the game that there was going to be constant, constant dimensional shifting on the fly, no loading needed. This was going to be very important to the gameplay of the game. It was going to be an experience you never had in a game before. It really, that's how they advertised it. And I don't feel like it lived up to that at all. It feels more like this is Ratchet and Clank with some pretty graphics and, you know, doing a few, a few things here and there. We're hitting crystals and dimensional shifting every once in a while, you know. Big Meech says, Rivet and Clank are the same character. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely 100% correct. No variety in the gameplay at all. They don't have any unique abilities. They don't have any unique weapons. And hell, there's even abilities in the game that have no use. Like, for example, in previous Ratchet and Clank games, it was very important that you actually got... Um, that you actually got to throw the wrench and hit things with it, right? Well... Not in this one. In this one, that ability exists, but it doesn't do anything. Like, there's no point in even having it. You use it, like, twice in the whole game. <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, being, being honest here, I do feel, feel that the game did not live up to expectations. Like, they really, when they advertised the game, they really made you feel like, oh, this is going to be groundbreaking, blow your socks off, amazing dimensional jumping between completely different worlds back and forth. Like here, here's what would have been neat. Imagine if in every stage, the rifts keep opening. So you start off on a mining world, but then in the middle of the mining world, for, you jump into a city. And then you have to play in a city for like 10 minutes. Then all of a sudden you jump through another rift and now you're in prehistoric times in a jungle fighting dinosaurs. But then while you're fighting the dinosaurs, you get sucked into another dimension and now you're in space on a pirate ship. And you're fighting pirates with dinosaurs, right? Like, that would be something I'd say, like, okay, dude, you totally crossed over a million different dimensional things. You know, realities are, are, are crossing over, and it's chaotic, and it's different, and it's original. They didn't do that. You know, they didn't do that at all. They basically went very, very safe with what would be expected in a platformer game like that, you know? So I do agree with you. I think they should have done better. Okay. Uh, let's continue on here. Uh, Timbo Slice tipped me a dollar thirty. Now hold on a second. He says I'm reloading it. Okay, he says, after playing both Ratchet and Clank and Medium, I'd say Medium does the different dimensions actually better. And with Medium you get to see both dimensions at once. Wow. A rare compliment for Medium, because I heard almost no one say anything good about that game. And he's actually saying Medium did the dimensions better. Wow. Woo! Well, Medium is coming out, what is it, uh, September? It is coming out for uh, PlayStation. The exclusivity is expiring. So, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll check it out or not. I kind of feel like it's going to be full price. I don't want to pay fucking 60, 70 bucks for it, you know. If it's discounted... Then maybe I'll actually get it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Snowcrawl took me a dollar thirty. So, what do you plans to rebuild on YouTube if you don't want to do co-op games with viewers or change your videos to the game algorithm? It doesn't isn't support doomed to decline without new viewers. Can we the viewers help you in any way? Um, well, what I would say, you know, let's let's be honest and let's talk a little bit about it, okay? There's a few things <clears throat> that have to happen. It's basically exactly what happened when I adjusted and went to YouTube the first time. And then, of course, when I went back to Twitch. The same things kind of happen. Um, you have an audience that's used to doing one thing on a daily basis, on a regular basis. And they have, they have to break that routine and get used to trying something different. That's not easy. I can tell you from every single time that I moved around from a platform to another platform. Keep in mind. I made videos for many different places. I, I, you know, YouTube. At one point, I actually was putting videos on um, 
God, I can't even remember what it was, Vimeo, because they YouTube was screwed up and wouldn't take one of my playthroughs. It was it was shutting down the videos, saying that they were decent or something stupid. Um, Blit TV, right? And then of course going from YouTube to Twitch, then back to YouTube, then Twitch. You know, <laughs> it definitely can 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 amount to some exhaustion with the viewing audience when you're moving around so much. Okay, and I totally get that. Um. What's happened every time is it takes a while to get people to get used to the change, and then eventually some people will get used to it, some people won't, but you'll start building up an audience in the new place that you are. Like, if you remember, when I became a full-time streamer, it was actually very weird for people. I was actually playing Breath of the Wild, and instead of just playing the game, I was sitting there trying to talk with you guys, and people were bringing up the most oddball conversations. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm obviously I'm trying to play this game, I'm like, why are you guys bringing up the weirdest topics? It's like you're trying to completely distract me and shit. And some people hated it. They were like, man, Phil won't just co won't focus on the game, right? And they didn't like it. But eventually, we adapted to the changes, and things got much, much better. And I think ultimately what's going to happen here is people are going to get used to the fact that I'm 100% on YouTube. People who right now are not giving it a chance are going to eventually give it a chance, right? What's going to happen is you're going to have people here who are here every day, you know, the same two, 300 people, who are on my streams every day, are going to say, hey, you know, Phil's streams over there are really good. You're missing out if you're not going over there. Look, the qu the visual quality is much better. The trolling is completely under control. Like, all the things that used to be the complaints about Twitch. Oh, it buffers too much. Oh, there's too much trolling. It's all gone here. It Like, we literally took care of it. It's just a matter of getting people to actually believe that this is actually a viable place for streaming. A lot of people just don't believe it. They don't want to believe that you can actually stream on YouTube and make a living and do and do well, you know. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Now, what are some things that I can do on YouTube to to change and, and the channel and basically make it uh, rebuild and stuff? Well, I mean, I'm talking with you guys about this all the time. Like, what are things that we could do on here that you'd like to see? That maybe would improve or do things. You know, some people have ideas, but the ideas that you have are the same fucking ideas we had on Twitch for 10, 10 years and didn't do anything. Like, oh, let's do a co-op stream. We, we did that. We did that many times. We already know why I can't do it. Like, you know exactly the reasons why I can't do co-op gameplay with viewers. You know it. It's not, I mean, this isn't rocket science. This is something that we're just doing for the first time. Oh, I've done it. And you've seen how the trolls fucking ruined it every time. They're going to do the same thing. They're not just going to magically say, oh, I decided not to ruin Phil's stuff today. <laughs> I actually went out and got a life for myself. Do you really think the trolls are going to go out and get lives for themselves now? If they were going to do that, they would have done it a long time ago. Okay? <laughs> but, I, you know, anyone has ideas for a new marathon. Anyone has ideas for a new kind of project, a new kind of gameplay. Right? Like, one idea that people had was, why not do Game Pass days where... Once I get an Xbox Series X, when who knows when that's going to be, but if I get one this year, okay, once a week, we jump on Game Pass together, we go through all the games that are on there, and see what's there, and then maybe we decide on one, this is the one that I'll download, and then I play it a little bit, and see if I like it or not. It'll expose me to a whole new style of game, maybe, or, or games that normally I wouldn't have played. Um, I think that's a really neat idea. Someone had that idea, and I was like, wow, that's you know something very, very interesting to check out. You know what that reminds me of, quite frankly? When I used to do demo days, like, a decade ago. Do you guys remember demo days? Probably not. So here's what demo days were, okay? There would be a day when I just didn't have much much to do. Or I just didn't. I just didn't have much to do at all. And I would say, okay, today I'm going to boot up my Xbox 360. We're going to jump on Xbox Live Store. We're going to go to the demo area, and we're just going to see what's available for game demos. They could sound good or they could be completely ludicrously stupid. Let's just download a few of these and play them today and see what they are. And I would sit there for three, four hours just playing demos and recording it and putting it on YouTube. And it was a complete variety style gameplay. It was variety stuff. People loved it, you know. Um, I think that Game Pass actually would give you the ability to have that kind of freedom since you're not spending any money. You could test a ton of games and see what they are, right? Games that normally I would never touch. Just give it a shot. See what it is. You know? So I think that's a great idea. Something like that, you know? 
changing changing my content from just being serious playthroughs all the time to instead being uh you know more variety style and and checking out maybe more games okay but again that's good so i need an xbox series x to do that you know half the games that are on there if i try to do this on xbox one i'll be incredibly limited with the games that i can play and likely it would just be older games and stuff it would be really awesome if i got an xbox series x to try out all these new releases and things that normally I wouldn't be playing, you know? So we'll see what happens with that. Right now, I certainly can't afford anything. But like I said, maybe in the next few months, once things kind of get settled in here, uh, me doing YouTube full-time, maybe I'll be able to, okay? But that's just one idea. Like I said, I am all ears, you guys. If you guys have ideas of things that we can do that are viable, awesome. But it has to be something viable. Not, oh, the same thing that I've requested for five years and we already know is not viable, but I'm just going to keep demanding it on YouTube now. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I have done VR streams, Big being, being Meech. He said, what about VR? I've done VR before. Um, actually, I did VR many times. Uh, back when P PlayStation VR came out, I, there was a good solid three, four months that I was playing most of the major VR releases for the thing. And essentially what happened was the gimmick died out for me. Like, I liked it at first, and then I just got bored of it because it, it really is just a gimmick. It's not anything in my opinion, it has any longevity. It's just kind of a, uh, oh, look, you know, you're in first person, there's things around you, and you can mess with them for a, a minute. But there's too, to, in my opinion, there's too many problems with VR be, in regards to comfort. Like me just playing VR, half the time I would feel sick to my stomach. That's not good. The, the headset itself would generate so much heat inside the headset that I, I'd be sweating bullets using the thing. You know, that's not good. There's, there's things they need to improve about VR to make it more viable for a common person, I feel. Um, plus, here's the thing. When I was doing VR, that was before I was doing interactive streaming. When you're doing VR, you can't see the chat at all. I would never be able to shout out anyone. I wouldn't be able to interact with you guys because I wouldn't be able to see the chat. So, I don't think it's very viable. Okay? Fair enough? Alberto Ponte tipped me... Four dollars and twenty cents. He said the following. Hold on. He says, "Sadly, Phil, in my opinion, you should focus on the story. The mechanics are underperforming. Seventy dollars is too much, and PlayStation Fives are already rare." Huh? Alberto Ponte, I'm not sure what you're talking about because you tipped me seven minutes ago. I think I completely missed the subject you're talking about, and now I'm completely confused. <laughs> I went right over my head. I'm sure you have a perfectly valid point, but I'm not sure what game you're speaking of. If you could clarify, I'd appreciate that. Alfred, thank you for the tip, by the way. That is the biggest tip of the... Oh, uh, no, you tied Rob, actually. Never mind. I was going to put you up as the biggest tipper, but actually, ties Rob. So thank you for that. Um. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. Oh, Snow Girls says he was referring to the haptic feedback game. Oh. An anonymous $10 tipper says, you're one of the greatest streamers out there. I've been loving your content for a while. Well, thank you to this anonymous tipper, whoever you may be. You, indeed, are the top tipper of the day. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Jad F to me, $1.30 says, popular... Uh, let's try this again. Popular Twitch streamer Lyric does this. He calls it Sub Sunday... He eats a whole Subway sub in one... Si Wait, what? No, he doesn't. I'm making that up. All right, he calls it Sub Sunday. What does he do? Let's see here. I'm refreshing again. If you can't tell, my laptop's being stupid today, so I'm refreshing this to see what he says. Okay, popular Twitch streamer Lyric does this. He calls it Sub Sunday. He plans random games proposed by members. You can adjust it by doing polls for Game Pass games. It's cool, especially for indies. Yeah, that sounds like a, I mean, that sounds legitimately like a, good, like a good idea. If anything, over the years, one thing we've seen is that when I get exposure to a lot of different games, sometimes it ends up being surprisingly interesting and good, and sometimes these games translate into whole playthroughs that I do later, right? So I feel like if I had this Game Pass with the Xbox Series X, we could just sit there once a week, have a full stream dedicated to looking through what's available, maybe saying, okay, out of these, let's try three games, right? And then I set them to download, and then maybe we can have a stream where I can try out those games and see if they're any good. Like, I really feel this is a, a solid idea. Because <clears throat> Game Pass takes all the risk of the purchase out of the equation. You don't have to worry about dropping 
20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks on a game that sucks, you could take that risk, right? I think this is a great idea. So, thank you, Jad F, for the tip. And uh, let me add that. We're at $23 in tips now. A bunch of Super Chats came in, but apparently they're a bunch of baloney. I'll, I'll tell you what they are in a second. Some derailing baloney. <laughs> I always love delicious derailing baloney. I love my derailing baloney with mustard. It's very good with mustard. Why not try PS Now? It's the same thing. No, it is not. I've heard PS Now is terrible. I've heard that PlayStation Now, first of all, if you try to buffer the games, it doesn't even work. Like, it's, it's horribly broken. If you download the games ahead of time, it kind of works, but it's nowhere near as good as Game Pass. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. So... I got two super chats from someone named Alien Xenomorph who's referencing some other streamer saying that I'm getting stream sniped and he's threatening to sue me. All right, good. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> How exciting. Another streamer is stream sniping me and is threatening to sue me. That's very awesome news. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. And then someone named Legitimate Problem also did a super chat talking about someone else's channel and watch someone's last video. No. I will not do that. Okay? Um, I talked about this yesterday. I'll bring it up again. Ladies and gentlemen, I am someone who does not play around with drama on the internet. Okay? All these fucking drama content creators, they want to start shit with other content creators. They want to fucking do stupid shit. I don't care. Do what you want on your own channel. Leave me out of it. I have nothing to do with it. Alright? I'm not going to play your games. I'm here to stream to my audience, have a fun time with games, period. That's all I'm here for. I don't care about somehow artificially enhancing or increasing my viewership and engagement because of some drama beef with some other person on the internet. I don't give two fucks, okay? I'm here to have a good time and chill, and that's it. If you don't like that, well, you're in the wrong place. You're not going to get me wrapped up in other people's drama and bullshit I don't care about some other streamer stream sniping me and talking shit. No one cares. <laughs> I believe, literally, no one cares about that. I'm here for completely different reasons than you, obviously. You are welcome to do whatever you want on your own streams, your own content. More power to you, actually. But for me, I am not going to involve myself in a bunch of baloney. All right, so thanks, but no thanks, as they say. All right, then. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Hold on. Alfred Aponte to me $3.30 and says, Phil, that is the writers of Ratchet and Clank. They should have made a more vibrant story. Uh, and the mechanics are like side things. Sorry for misspelling. So is that what you were talking about earlier? That's exactly what he was talking about. Oh my God, I completely missed that. I didn't know what he was saying before. Now I get it. Okay, so I tend to agree with you. Yeah, I think the story of Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, starts strong and then basically fizzles out about halfway through. It stops being interesting about halfway through. And it's just kind of like, all right, all right, well, all right, all right, let's just get this over with, you know? Because there's nothing else really interesting happening. Um, and I agree with you. The mechanic is underwhelming for a $70 game. What do you really get? Pretty graphics. And that's, I mean, listen. The graphics are outstanding. I've even got the ray tracing turned on, and the ray tracing makes the game fucking look so cool. All right? But outside of that, you know, I, what else is really groundbreaking about Ratchet & Clank? It certainly isn't the gameplay mechanics. You know, it basically feels like Ratchet, old Ratchet & Clank with different visuals. You know what I mean? And to some extent, people have been telling me they're disappointed, even as a Ratchet & Clank game. People who are fans of the Ratchet and Clank franchise are saying they're disappointed by the game. That it's not, it shouldn't be worth 70 bucks. It's crazy. So, all right. Only Ask Coffee says, how many games should you get with Game Pass? Can you only use it once per week? No, it's for, it, dude, it's unlimited. You, you, you basically, you pay the monthly fee, which everyone tells me is completely different. Some people are like, oh, it's $15 a month. 
So people are like, no, it's 13. So people are like, oh, it's 10. And then other people are like, oh, no, you can fool the system. If you already have Xbox Live Gold, you can get a free upgrade and then extend it. So for like $5, you can get like 17 years of Game Pass or something like that. <laughs> By then, the world might actually overheat and explode. But apparently, you can get like, you know, you can commit a lifetime Game Pass or something crazy like that. All right, anyway, I don't really know how it works. I know it's not expensive, okay? But essentially, you pay that, and then you get everything. There is no limit. It's not like, oh, you can only download two games a week. It's like, get whatever the fuck you want. It's like Netflix, you know? You get download, 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 get, get, get. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy, man. Um, I, I can see that the value is going to be there. Like I said, once I get an Xbox Series X, I could foresee myself using that console a lot. Whenever there's something that's cross-platform and it's on Game Pass, you know I'm getting it on Game Pass. Whenever there's something that's an exclusive, I'll obviously play. And then there's going to be opportunity when older games and stuff are added to Game Pass to play these games. You know, every once in a while, we want a retro playthrough. Likely the game's on Game Pass. You know? It's an outstanding value. And the thing is, up until this year, people didn't really see the value in it because there was no exclusives for Xbox Series X. But now, all of a sudden, there's going to be, in the next six months, I think there's supposed to be, like, six major high-profile games that are all going to be day one Game Pass. Like, I think, um... Let's think about this. Microsoft Flight Simulator, Psychonauts 2, 12 Minutes, Back for Blood, uh, Forza Horizon 2. All those, just off the top of my head, and that's just a few, are day one Game Pass. And even though a lot of those are cross-platform, why pay full price for that game on a PlayStation console when you get it under Game Pass for no additional charge, you know? So, to me, that is outstanding value, and I'm not a paid shill for Microsoft or Game Pass. I just, as a gamer, I see the value there, you know? Well, there you go, Halo Infinite. Well, if Halo Infinite ever releases, apparently it's supposed to be under Game Pass, but that's kind of silly because, remember, Halo Infinite multiplayer is free anyway. So it's kind of silly to say that and act like it's a big deal when everyone's going to get Halo multiplayer for free, you know. I mean, yeah, you'll get the you'll get the campaign under Game Pass essentially, right? All right. So anyway, um That's the deal. <laughs> that's the deal. So yeah, it's a great deal. Uh Jad F just to me a dollar 30 and he says stack 3 times 12 months of gold for whatever price, 30 to 60 per year, convert that to Game Pass Ultimate for another dollar or $15, and that's it. 36 months of Ultimate. You can always just be a regular sub for $15 a month. I still don't understand how that works, but... Yeah, people are saying if you're a, a Xbox Gold, you can upgrade it to Game Pass for, like, a minimal amount of money or something like that. So... <laughs> Hello, Turtle Dude. How are you today? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. All right, guys. Well, the only game news to talk about today, I forgot because I had it. <laughs> I was going to talk about it like 45 minutes ago. I completely forgot what it was. It wasn't very important, by the way. There's not much game news today at all. It's a very slow day. So... <laughs> Albert Upon says, G-O-W was the stream last night. I didn't even say, how was the stream last night? It went well. We got some good developments, and now we're going to finish the case in Danganronpa on Monday night. So it's good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone else have any questions or any other concerns or things you'd like to ask me about or talk about before I begin with today's gameplay? Last chance now to get in and, uh, and ask a question or whatever before we... I'll take a quick break to use the bathroom as usual. And then we will uh, we'll jump in and get ready with Mario Golf. Happy Fillmore is Adam Sandler 2.0. Do you agree? I guess we'll see. Right now I'm doing well. But imagine if I start failing like Happy Gilmore and I start, <laughs> I start freaking out. Throws the club into the crowd. Remember that shit? Okay. All right, guys, here's what we'll do. Let's take a break. Let me use the restroom. I recommend you grab a drink or a snack yourselves. Do whatever you need to do. I'll be back in a few minutes here, and then we will jump into Mario Golf Super Rush. Sound good? 
Thanks, I'll take a quick commercial break. I'll be right back. 